Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another weekly video log. It is May 4th, 2015, and I got a lot to talk about this week because it was my friendly local gaming convention in Fort Wayne, Indiana uh, called 3Con, but I'll be talking about that a little bit later. I'm also going to be talking about uh, two of the new games from Arcane Wonders that I was able to try out, one of which is uh, one of the new games in the Dice Tower Essentials line. Ooh, intriguing. I'm going to be talking about our Gen Con Bonanza, but before we start that, I want to mention that if you have a question for me, be sure to post in the comments below, and I'll be sure to answer it next week. And I also want to give a big shout out to Storm Chaser on Board Game Geek, aka Dean. He messaged me and said, hey, I've seen your videos. I saw you're from Fort Wayne, Indiana. I was wondering if I could come play some games with you. And we said, more the merrier, obviously, because uh, we host our game night every Wednesday. He came over, we played some games, had some fun, and he was nice enough to actually donate a game to Bowers Game Corner for me to review, checked out my wish list, and uh, he hooked us up with Twilight Imperium Shattered Empire Expansion, which needless to say made me ooh, giddy because I absolutely love Twilight Imperium. As many of you know, it's my favorite game of all time. So uh, needless to say, I have a game of Twilight Imperium hopefully playing in the next month or two now that my college finals are over. Score. Uh, but let's go ahead and talk about, uh, I want to talk about my Gen Con Bonanza first. I'll talk about the games I played at the convention in a second, but I just wanted to give you guys a little heads up on what's going to be happening. We're going to be running a Kickstarter probably about 20 days to mid to uh, mid June some or mid May excuse me to go to Gen Con we're planning on four hundred dollars we're asking for but what I want to talk to you guys about is the fact that I'm emailing a bunch of different companies to see if I can get different promos and games to give out to you guys as part of the Gen Con Bonanza uh, subscribers. Uh, not sure exactly how we're going to handle it, but so far we've got three yeses. One from Black Locust Games, who has already hooked us up with uh, a couple games that we're going to be giving out. Uh, Game Salute was nice enough to say that, hey, if you guys stop by our booth, which we were already going to do because we're gonna, hopefully going to get some interviews, they will hook us up with some stuff to give to you guys. And then last but not least, Arcane Wonders was nice enough to say they are going to hook us up with some stuff. They haven't told us what it is yet, but hopefully it'll be some stuff that you guys really like. Uh, so, very excited about that, but let's talk about the games I was able to play this week. And I went to my local convention, and I love trying new games when I'm at my uh, at, at these kind of conventions. First game I tried was Gravwell, and this is a game that I'd heard about. I heard, it sounded really interesting. It's, it, it's all about gravity and letters and all kinds of various different stuff. I wasn't exactly sure what to expect, but I ended up really enjoying the game. So in Gravwell, you're taking control of a spaceship. You're trying to go around the circle and be the first person to get to a, a certain point. It's like a gravity word call or something. But the interesting mechanic in this game is that depending on your location with other players, that's the direction that you're going to move when you play a card down. You should be playing down these cards with different numbers on it. So for instance, you might play a card with a four on it. Now you would assume you would go forward four, but you go forward four only if you are closer to uh, another ship that is in front of you. So for instance, let's say that there's a ship right here, one space in front of you, you're right there, and then another ship, two spaces behind you. You would go forward four spaces because you were closer to this guy right here. So you go one, two, three, four, and it would slingshot you forward. Let's say that's the reverse. So let's say there's a guy in front of you two spaces ahead. You're right here, and then a guy one space right back here. So if you played that same four, you would actually go backwards one, two, three, four. Four. So it had a very interesting mechanic in that avenue, and also it had some drafting. So at the beginning of a round, you're going to see, uh, you'll say, say in a two-player game, you'd see six cards face up, but there's also going to be six cards face down underneath the face up cards. So you would know half of the information that someone else is drafting and half the information that you're drafting. Now these cards are going to have letters on them, and you're both going to play one card down at a time. And it goes by alphabetical order. So if you played an A, you're guaranteed to go first. If you played a Z, you'd be guaranteed to go last. And they had all 26 letters in the alphabet. And the thing was, you were never quite sure what your opponent was going to play. So you had to kind of plan based on that. There were also two kinds of special cards that would either uh, repulse you away from the gravitational pull or uh, bring everything closer to you. Just enough unique trickiness in the game. I really enjoyed it a lot. It's not going to be for everyone. This is definitely a try before you buy kind of game, but I really liked Grabwell. Another older game I was able to try that I never played was Vegas Showdown. And uh, I see what all the hoopla is about. It was a lot of fun. I think it's a great introductory game, maybe a, a gateway game or a gateway plus game, all about building casinos and trying to connect 
uh, your casinos to buy various different rooms and trying to get all these bonus points and bidding. I really like the bidding mechanic on this, so you would only get one bid during a turn, and so if someone outbid you, you'd have to move it somewhere else, which might cause someone else to have to go somewhere else. And, and I liked it an awful lot. I definitely think that's one that needs a reprint. That was Vegas Showdown. Two new, not quite out yet games that I was able to play. The first one was Mage Wars Academy from Arcane Wonder. And this is Mage Wars' upcoming game, uh, which I didn't know too much about, but now I'm kind of excited about it. Uh, I'm actually really excited because Mage Wars is one of my favorite games of all time. And what they tried to do was keep the Mage Wars theme and the Mage Wars feel, but make it so it took up a lot less table space and it was a lot quicker. And I was able to play a game of this, and they succeeded in this. It definitely feels a lot like Mage Wars. It really did. It gave you the Mage Wars flavor, but at the same time, it was much quicker, it did take up less table space, and in one really cool crinkle, uh, you're going to be able to use all the cards from Mage Wars Academy in your regular Mage Wars sets. Now, not vice versa, but still, that's pretty freaking cool. Um, I think they got a real hit on their hands there, especially with people who already play Mage Wars, because it's just like buying a big expansion if you buy this thing. And I am really excited to uh, check out Mage Wars Academy. They, the, the game was not finished. They're still hammering out a couple things here and there. It didn't have all the, the right artwork. But I was still, uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, the newest game that I played, or the, the, the game that I played that I enjoyed the most, though, was called Onitama. And this is going to be the next, well, the, actually, I believe the second to next game coming out in the Dice Towers Essential line. And wow, I was blown away by this game. I'm not the biggest fan of abstract games. I don't dislike abstract games, but if you made me pick, they'd probably be near the bottom of the list. That being said, I want this game. It was a lot of fun. It says it plays in five minutes. It plays in five minutes. You can teach this game in under a minute because it is that simple. So essentially, you have a checkered board. Or you just have a board set out. And, and each player is going to have, I believe, four pawns and one king down at the bottom. And vice versa, the other person is going to have four pawns and one king down at the bottom. And your goal is to get your pawn to capture the other player's king or your king to capture the other player's king. Just capture the other player's king, I should say. Now, you are going to have two cards down here, and your opponent are going to have two cards up here, and there will be one card in the middle right there. And you are only going to have one action that you can take on your turn, and that is that you have to move one of your pieces with one of these two cards right here. Now, when you use that card, you're going to move your piece, and then you're going to take your card, put it right here in the middle, and then take that card in the middle and put it down in front of you, and then your opponent is going to do the same thing. So they're going to move their piece, they're going to take their card, put it in the middle, and take that card that you just put in the middle and put it back in their hand. And you're going to do that until someone captures a king. And I really liked it. All the information is completely on the table. They're going to have a bunch of cards. Uh, the theme, they're going to be, I believe they're going to be modifying the theme to make it Japanese, Asian, Kung fu -y, which is not my cup of tea, but still in an abstract game, don't really care. But that was Onitama. I really enjoyed that one. I think that is definitely one to check out, especially if you're looking for a two-player game, a quick game, or an abstract game. Really enjoyed it. Uh, so what else did I do at my convention? I'll just give you a rundown of what my convention was like. It was $20, and it got you Saturday and Sunday, full days of gaming. There were also tournaments being ran, and uh, various other different things like that. I am, there he is. So what did I do? Uh, I didn't really buy too much. I was on a pretty strict budget, you know, um, just just because. Uh, I did buy some DC Dice Masters packs. I played in a Star Realms tournament, because I really enjoy Star Realms. And I won my first game, and then if I would have won my second game, I would have played in the championship game. And I, I did not think it was possible, but I was able to trash all of my Vipers and all of my Scouts, and I still lost the game. You heard that correctly. If you play Star Realms right now, you're probably like, what? How does that happen? That's what I thought. That's just how unlucky I was getting on the draws of the cards, I guess. Uh, I was able to get rid of every, all of my beginning cards. I had just awesome cards, and I still ended up losing by two points. And what really stinks is my next hand, I would have been able to do 34 points of damage and just poof, obliterate them. Uh, but, you know, that's how it ends up happening. And actually, funnily, uh, I don't think it's a word, but funny enough, uh, a woman that I taught Star Realms like 45 minutes before the tournament actually ended up winning the tournament. And I thought that was kind of humorous. Um, 
So, Steve Jackson Games. Oh, yeah, what did I write that down? Uh, just a little, I uh, had a little issue with Steve Jackson Games, which is uh, which kind of stinks. They do send me games to review, but I, I had inquired about doing a zombie dice tournament. Now, I've never ran a tournament at any of my conventions, so I thought, you know, I'll start off nice and simple and do a zombie dice. And I said, I emailed them and I said, hey, uh, would you guys be willing to donate, you know, a copy of Zombie Dice and promo or something like that so I could run a tournament at my friendly local con? And they said, yeah, that'll be no problem. We'll get that in the mail for you. And then it never came in the mail. So I emailed them again and I was like, Hey, hey, what happened? We're, 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 so the convention's coming up. Blah, 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 blah. Did it again. Still no response either time. And uh, yeah, I ended up having to cancel the tournament because of that. And uh, also low turnout. But that's partially because, you know, I wasn't like talking people up about it because I didn't think it was going to happen. And it was just frustrating. And Steve Jackson Games, you know, the, they did not respond back. And they still haven't responded back to me. So I don't know what the deal is with that. Uh, one more thing I wanted to mention about 3Con was I was in a Dominion tournament and I won it! Hurrah! I ended up winning the Dominion tournament. I ended up winning this bad boy right here, this uh, Native American 3Con winning tournament winner statue, which is really nice and heavy. It's going to go up, uh, up over here because I'm pointing to something that you obviously can't see. It's going to go up over there uh, with some of my other trophies that I have won. Uh, but overall, it was definitely worth the 20 bucks. It was a lot of fun. My wife got frustrated because I was out of town. Well, not out of town. It was only a mile and a half from my house. But she got frustrated because I was there all weekend. But I, I told her, you know, it's like my treat for my finals being over and my stuff. Uh, but I had a lot of fun. And also, I should say, you need to go to your local cons. I know, I know. you know, sometimes they might feel like they're hunky, you know, they're, they're, they're ran for, they're ran by love. I mean, pe most of those people there are volunteers, and they have tons of giveaway at my personal con. I actually was able to score two games, which I'm really excited about, and I'll be sure to show you right now. The first one, uh, not nearly as excited about, was I won Like the Social Game from Cranio Creations. Um... It says it plays up to eight players, so if it's good, I'm going to be super excited. But I, my hopes are not high with this game, but needless to say, I'll probably give you my impressions of this game in the coming weeks. The one that I was more excited to win is Zombie Island from the Flux Capacity. Now, this was actually one of the games that I put on my, I think I put on my top ten most anticipated of Gen Con last year, because I love zombie games. This, uh, I remember reading on the Board Game Geek page, is that it was solo, so I could learn it and then teach it to other people. Also, that there's a variant where one person plays the zombies and everybody else is trying to survive. It sounded really intriguing. I actually did an interview with the guy about the game at Gen Con and so I was really excited to get this and I did some more research on the game last night and I started to look at the box and I got a little bit confused so I'm not quite sure about this game. It was actually originally titled titled Voodoo Island, and it failed on Kickstarter, and then they just produced it anyway. And then it says it's one to four players, it'll take about 30 minutes on BGG, but apparently now uh, it's three to five players, and it'll take you uh, 45 minutes. So I'm not quite sure about what the deal is with this game, but needless to say, I'm looking forward to getting this played this week and uh, giving you my impressions. But that has been my week at Bowers Game Corner. It was a fun, fun week. Uh, I had a blast, played a lot of games at my local convention, and I hope you had a good week as well. Stay tuned for our Gen Con Bonanza. We're going to be coming up with a lot more information very, very soon. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.